All right, YouTubers, I want to lay a little groundwork down before we get into our dialogue and discussion. I'm reading from a book called Into Egypt Again with Ships by Elijah J. Israel. Very good book for Black History Month. I believe all black Americans should get this book. As you follow me on YouTube, you're going to see that I show a lot of books almost every day or weekly. Uh, you need to read Knowledge is Power. That was one of the things in slavery that we were kept from reading and gaining this precious wisdom and knowledge. So now that you have the time to read, take time to read and gain knowledge because once you read, you find out a plethora of information and knowledge out there. I'm going to start off first of all with Israel as a nation. I want to discuss Israel is over in Africa. A lot of people will say the Middle East, but the Israel is really over in Northeast Africa. When you opened up the Bible in the book of Genesis, the Bible starts off in Genesis with certain countries, Mesopotamia, Egypt, uh, you'll learn all these different nations that's there. Remember when Jesus was with Mary and Joseph and King Herod was trying to kill the baby Jesus. They went down into Egypt to hide. So Egypt is a place that is in Northeast Africa and it is there in Israel. That's where Israel is. Israel was really a black nation, not a white or Caucasian nation. Israel has always been a black nation when you deal with the, the Somalians, Canaan, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Ur, and the different nations that are down there. That is a black race, dark-skinned race of people. I want to talk to you about the color of the ancient Israelites. If you go with me here to the book of Lamentations, the book of Lamentations chapter 4 verses 8 says this their visage is blacker than a coal they are not known in the streets their skin cleaveth to their bones it is withered it is become like a stick here the prophet Jeremiah is giving a description of the people of Israel the Hebrew Israelites their visage, their look, a description of them is blacker than a coal. So I think that takes away our whitewash theory that the Hebrew Israelites were a light-skinned, blonde, blue-eyed people. They were a dark race of people that was always kept in slavery because of their rebellion against Yah. Our next chapter, chapter 5, verse 10 it says our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine their skin got dark because of a famine god put a famine and a pestilence upon his people so in order for your skin to be dark your skin had to be dark already for it to get darker and turn to the color of a coal and everyone knows that a charcoal briquette, a coal, is black. Moses, God speaks to Moses. He tells Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. The miracle with Moses that most people don't understand, when Moses speaks all of these plagues and these signs upon the uh, Pharaoh's children, uh, God tells Moses, this is what I want you to do, Moses. I want you to go to Pharaoh and I want you to take your hand, take your hand, stick it inside your cloak, inside your robe, and I want you to pull your hand out and show Pharaoh your hand. Now, where was the miracle if Moses was white, Caucasian, and he took his hand and stuck it in his cloak and it was white already and he pulled it out and showed Pharaoh and it was still white? There was no miracle there. What I'm trying to prove to you, according to the scripture, is that Israel, Moses, Abraham, the forefathers of our nation, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were a black, dark-skinned race of people. 
So when Moses took his black hand and he stuck it inside of his robe and his cloak and he pulled it out and he showed it to Pharaoh, the Bible says his skin was leprous white because back then they knew when your skin was white, that was a form of leprosy. That was a type of disease. If you remember Elijah's servant Gehazi, when he tried to go back and get money and everything else from the king that had been healed, he went and he was cursed and he had leprosy and he turned completely white. So that's the miracle I want to stay with right there is that when Moses takes his black hand and puts it in his cloak and his robe and he pulls it back out, he shows it to Pharaoh and it is white. So that is the miracle there. So the miracle was not in his hand being white already, putting it in his robe and pulling it out and showing Pharaoh, but it was in it being black and then being turned white. And when God told him, take your hand, put it back inside your robe and pull it back out, it became black again and turned back to its natural color. So that was dealing with Moses. Moses also, while we're on that topic, Moses was seeing one of his brothers. Now Moses was a Hebrew Israelite, which were dark skinned, skinned people. And the Israelites were always in bondage because they did not follow the commandments, the precepts, the statutes of Yah. So they were always in bondage and slavery. Uh, these people were in bondage year after year, 400 years of slavery, even until today. Uh, from last year when President Trump signed in an agreement declaring that 400 years black people have been in slavery. It is well known that the black race are the true Hebrew Israelites that the Bible speak of. And the only reason why I'm even speaking on this is because churches today that have this platform, mega churches with 30,000 members, those members have sat there all of their lives and don't know that they are the true people that the Bible speaks of. And if you don't know your history, you will repeat it. So that's the reason why we don't ascribe value to ourselves as black people. And our value has been torn down. You've been told you're ugly, your big noses, your skin color. When we came out with uh, James Brown, I'm proud, I'm black and I'm proud. Everything gets taken from us. Everything gets twisted and torn and uh, uh, deteriorated. And, you know, it's it just messed up. Nothing is our slogan. We can't have anything. Black lives matter. You try to say all lives matter, but right now we're dealing with black lives. People take that and they twist it and say, well, all lives matter. Well, we never said all lives did not matter.